See, in the real corporate world, it is very common for companies to have a complex structure. This complex structure mainly comprises of subsidiaries, which are ultimately controlled by a common company. The reason why companies float subsidiaries is because subsidiary is a separate company. If it is a separate company, it has a separate legal identity. If it has a separate legal identity, it will maintain a separate set of books. So the moment you are preparing a separate p and the moment you are preparing a separate balance sheet, keeping the track of the activities of that company becomes that much easier. Also, at the end of the period, we do come to know what is the profit or loss separately for that particular company. Similarly, we will also get a good idea about the affairs of the company in way of its balance sheet. There are so many popular companies in India and even worldwide, which at the end of the day are subsidiaries. Take the case of Reliance Industries, for example. Reliance Geo, right? It has taken the telecom sector by a storm. But ultimately, Reliance Geo is nothing but a subsidiary of Reliance Industries. Similarly, Reliance is now also venturing into the retail sector. Geo Mart, for example, right? That is also, at the end of the day, a subsidiary. Or you take the Tata Group, the Tata Group of companies. Consider Tata Motors, consider Tata Consultancy Services, consider Tata T. At the end of the day, they are all subsidiary companies of Tata Sons. So in the corporate world, in order to fix accountability, it is very normal to float subsidiaries. But you know what happens over a period of time? Over a period of time, the company will have large number of subsidiaries. Just imagine for a moment, you have invested in shares of Reliance Industries. Just think for a moment. And let's assume for a moment that Reliance has a total, let us say, 20 subsidiaries. Let's see. Now, if you have invested in shares of Reliance Industries, then you will receive a copy of the annual report. Now, in the copy of the annual report, let us say they are giving you 21 p and and 21 balance sheets. Why 21? Because Reliance Industries, that is the company which is controlling 20 subsidiaries. So one PNL, one balance sheet, one cash flow statement, of course, of Reliance. But then you also have 20 subsidiaries. So in that same annual report, you have 20 PNLs of all the concepts, uh, all the subsidiaries. You have 20 balance sheets of all those subsidiaries. So total, you have 21 PNL, 21 balance sheet. Now go through the annual report. Isn't it? It's going to be a daunting task. It's going to be really very complicated. How will I really go through such a large number of different p and different balance sheets? And on top of that, let us say 21 auditor reports are also given. 21 director reports are also given. It's going to be really tough. That is the reason we have something known as consolidated financial statements which henceforth we will call as CFS. What is CFS doing? CFS is asking the parent company. What is parent? We will discuss that. CFS is asking the parent company to prepare its, uh, its financial statements as if the parent and the subsidiary are a single economic unit, as if they are all a single company. In other words, we will ask Reliance Industries that, hey, you are having 20 subsidiaries, we know. But if you are one single company, if parent and those 20 subsidiaries is one single company, then how will your balance sheet look like? How will your p and look like? And that is what will become consolidated financial statements. CFS is preparing financial statements as if the parent and the subsidiaries are a single company. You can even call this as notional amalgamation. Notional amalgamation. Those companies are not actually getting amalgamated. But if the parent and the subsidiaries all get amalgamated, then how will a single balance sheet look like? How will a single p and look like? How will a single cash flow statement look like? That is what we understand as consolidated financial statements. CFS will be prepared in India as per Accounting Standard 21. 
The title of AS21 itself is Consolidated Financial Statements. Now, Accounting Standard 21 will become applicable when one entity controls another entity. Controls another entity. Till this thing does not happen, I cannot apply Accounting Standard 21. AS21 requires that one entity should control another entity. The entity that controls, okay, the entity that controls will be referred as parent. In India, we also use the term holding company, but Accounting Standard 21 uses the term parent. So the entity that controls is parent. And then we have another entity, another entity. This is entity being controlled. The entity that has been controlled will be referred as a subsidiary. So I will apply accounting standard 21 when there is a parent subsidiary relationship. And tell me when shall, be, when shall there be a parent subsidiary relationship if one entity is able to control another entity. So the question that arises is, when can we say that one entity is controlling another entity? So let's see the definition of control under accounting standard 21, right? So we are saying parent and subsidiary under AS21. Parent we have already understood, that is the firm which is controlling all the companies. While subsidiary we have understood as the subsidiary that is getting controlled but question is, when can we say that the parent is controlling the subsidiary? So here it is. What do we mean by control? Now, there are two ways in which one entity can establish control over another entity. The first way is directly or indirectly, we are acquiring more than one half of the voting power. Okay, concentrate on the words we are saying one half just see here more than one half of the voting power of an enterprise voting power as far as company is considered we will understand voting power as equity shares because once i acquire more than one half of the equity shares i can stand in a position to control the company for example there is company A, let us say, A is buying 80% shares of B, 80% shares of B, right? So you are acquiring more than one half of the voting power, more than one half, 80%, obviously is more than one half. So if this is the AGM, let's say the AGM of B is going on, right? AGM of B is going on. We know that most of the decisions of a company are taken by a simple majority. So if I have 80% shares, 80% equity shares, right? There is any item in the agenda in that meeting. I will cast 80% votes in its favor. It will get accepted or I will cast 80% votes against it and it will get rejected, right? So that's the reason I can say that I am in a position to control that particular company. Again, it is not necessary. I should have as much as 80%, more than one half. You know, a lot of people are like that if I if we acquire 51%, no, it's not necessary 51%. They are using the words more than one half. Even if I acquire, let us say 50.1, that means the rest are having 49.9. Even with 50.1%, I can control that particular entity, right? But this is acquiring the ownership directly it can also be possible indirectly especially through a subsidiary for example a has let us say a has 60 percent shares of b and b has 80 percent shares of c right so question is is a my question is is a controlling c this is my question. Is A able to control C? Okay, understand this thing. A is controlling B. See, in B, you are having more than one half. So we can say A 
controls B. Now see from B's viewpoint, B has 80% in C. That means B controls C. Now, question is, is A able to control C? Tell me, who is controlling C? Who is controlling C? B is controlling C. And who is controlling B? A is controlling B. So can I say A is controlling C? It's very natural that A is controlling C. A is controlling C not directly. A is controlling C indirectly through its subsidiary. Look at these words which are there in the accounting standard. Right, this definition of control is as per accounting standard 21. They are saying indirectly through a subsidiary. So you can have direct control, you can even have indirect control. You can even have a situation where you are having even 100% shares, right? That is also possible. For example, A has purchased 100% shares of B. Then also we can say that B is getting controlled by A. This is popularly known as wholly owned subsidiaries. We call this as wholly owned subsidiaries. So this is one way in which we are in a position to establish control, where you are directly or indirectly through a subsidiary controlling more than one half of the voting power of the enterprise. After all, all that matters in the company is the voting power. If you are having managerial control, you are in a position to control that particular company. I have 60% shares in your company. You have 40% whatever i say is the final word right whatever i say is final word yes there are certain resolutions in the companies act where you require minimum three fourth that is minimum 75 percent at that time your holding will matter but the day-to-day -day management of the company routine decisions of the company most of the agenda in the annual general meeting it is required to be passed by simple majority that is the reason we are saying that anyone who is having more than one half will be able to control that particular company. There's yet another way in which I can control the company, right? That is part B of the definition. They are saying, if you are in a position to control the composition of board of directors in case of a company. Tell me, at the end of the day, who takes decisions for a company? A company is an artificial person. Company cannot take its own decisions. Ultimately, it is a group of individuals who will take decisions on behalf of the company. And this group of individuals is no one but the board of directors, right? The members of the board of directors. So if I can control the composition of board of directors, that means I can control that particular company. For example, think in this way now. Think in this way. As far as voting power is considered, let's say we do not have more than one half. Let us say there is company A. This company A has only 40% shares of B. Now in definition, in part A, we are saying that you should at least have more than one half. Now I don't have more than one half, but, but, and understand this, but there is a memorandum of understanding between A and B. You know what is the memorandum of understanding? Whoever, whoever is appointed as director, think in this way, whoever is appointed as director in A, in A, automatically becomes director, automatically becomes director in B. Think in this way. Whoever is appointed as the director of A automatically becomes also director of B. In other words, company A will control the composition of board of directors of B. Am I right? Whatever are the decisions of B that will be taken by the uh, that will be taken by the board of directors. And that board of directors itself is within the control of A. Even if we have 40% shares, still we can say that A is controlling B, right? A is able to control B. And that is the reason we can say that a parent and subsidiary relationship is established. In B, they are also using some other words also. They are saying in case of a company board of directors, 
or the composition of the corresponding governing body in case of any other enterprise so as to obtain economic benefits from its activities. Accounting standard 21 is not limited to identifying subsidiaries simply as companies. Even a partnership firm may also become a subsidiary. So let us say company A, think in this way. Company A is able to control the governing body of a partnership firm, right? Something in this way. Here we were saying that whoever is appointed as director in A automatically becomes director in B. But let us say we say it automatically becomes partner, automatically becomes partner in firm B. Let's say B is a partnership firm. So let us say there are quite a few number of partners and out of that partners, you have certain number of partners which will be a part of the governing body. A is able to control that governing body of the partnership firm. That partnership firm will also become your subsidiary. This is there in the definition. Of course, when we'll be solving questions, they will not give us questions based on partnership firms. We will have questions based on a parent as a company and also the subsidiaries which will be given as companies and over a course of accounting standard 21 we will have to learn that how that consolidation will be carried out so remember the simple thing when will you apply accounting standard 21 you will apply accounting standard 21 only if there is a parent subsidiary relationship when shall there be a parent and subsidiary relationship when parent is in a position to control the subsidiary when is this control established that date will be understood as the acquisition date and from the acquisition date we will start applying accounting standard 21 so the starting point for application of as21 is to identify whether control is there or not and the control will get manifested in two ways Either you are controlling more than one half of the voting power or you are in a position to control the composition of board of directors or maybe both are there. Majority of the times both will be there. If I buy 60% shares of your company, understand one thing. If I have 60% shares of your company, I will also be able to control the composition of your board of directors. It is but natural.